Hey, this is Marcus Sortias. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the PGY Tech Beetle camera clip. Let's get started. So I have the package from Amazon here. Let's see. Actually, let me check the price for you real fast. Yeah, so this normally sells for $60, but I bought this during Amazon Prime Day, so I had a small discount, so I was able to buy it for only $50. So this is the box. PGY Tech Beetle Camera Clip. Let's see if I open this. On this side, or... Uh, I'm too careful like I want to like cut it as neatly as possible open it as neatly as possible I think this is the way to do it There we go. Let's see. There we go. So this is the camera clip. Okay, a whole bunch of <laughs> stuff just fell out of the cardboard. Yes, yeah, so I watched some tutorial videos on how to use it, so let's see if I how intuitive this thing is to use. Okay, so press this button to release the plate. Slide it back in. Okay, that's in there. How do I open it to attach it though? Okay, so you leave you leave this switch up if you want to be able to release this. But if you move this switch this way, it locks in and even if you press the button it won't won't release. Okay, I don't know how to <laughs> how to open this. Let me check the tutorial real fast. Oh, okay. So I guess I'm supposed to take off this sticker. Okay. I'll leave that there for now. So I guess this is the latch to release. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, it took, me, it took some force to get that open. So now I can attach it to a strap. So let me go to my notes and I'll just talk through like why I decided to get this. Yeah, so I, as I said in an earlier video, my gear buying habits have evolved. So instead of chasing like the newest camera or newest lens, nowadays my focus more is on just finding gear, not necessarily the most exciting stuff, but the things that make shooting faster, easier, more fun, more convenient. And so this will come in handy because I've been thinking of switching to like a two camera setup. And the reason why is I've been doing more photo shoots and workshops. So for now, I've just been using one camera. So I've been using my, my Canon EOS R. But lately though, I've been feeling slowed down whenever I needed to change lenses. 
So I like using this lens. This is the Canon EF 85mm f1.8 because it's such a great portrait lens and I just love how it makes people look. However, though, it has a very tight field of view and so it's not the most practical lens for like run and gun event photography and like taking candid shots like I love to do. So oftentimes I have to switch to this other lens. So this is a Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8, the G1 version. So I often have to switch to this lens whenever I need to get a wider field of view. And so once I was on a, this really, so this problem really hit home for me when I was at a group photo shoot. And so I was uh, taking photographs of this model and I spotted this really cool rock feature. And so I wanted her to kind of like lean against it and pose against it and lie against this uh, rock feature. And so at the time I had this 85 millimeter lens on. And so I just had to stop, take off this lens, put on the Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter so that I could zoom out to 24 millimeters and get the shot. And I did get the shot in the end, but it was just annoying to have to kind of like stop that momentum and stop the energy and like rapport with the model to change lenses. So that it was after that photo shoot that I really started thinking about maybe switching to a two camera setup. So interestingly, I, I this is the camera that I started with, the 5D Mark III. Oh, actually, no, this is not it. <laughs> this is the 5D Mark III. And so um, I was, I, even though this is the camera I started with, it's pretty much just been sitting on the shelf ever since I got the my newer camera, the Canon EOS R. But I thought about like taking this off the shelf and bringing it out of retirement to use as a second camera. And either I would put this lens, the, the Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter on it, or another wide angle lens like my Canon EF 35 millimeter F2 IS USM. Or if I really wanna go lightweight, I also have a Canon EF 40 millimeter F2.8 pancake lens that also would be good. So just so, I just wanna be able to have access to like a wider angle lens to switch to. And so when you, when it comes to like having a two camera setup, like the first thing that pops into mind is getting like a dual harness setup. So like the hold fast money maker is like really popular in, with wedding photographers, but like it's genuine leather and like super expensive. So <laughs> I knew I wasn't gonna buy that. But then also there's the, I was also strongly considering the black rapid dual harness setup. But the more I thought about it, the way I like to shoot is I like to wear my camera backpack. So having a harness didn't make sense for that. So that's when I decided to Think about getting a camera clip instead that would clip to my backpack strap. So the first one that popped into mind was uh, the Peak Design capture clip because that's so popular, all the YouTubers have it. But uh, when I looked into alternatives, I saw this one, the PGY Tech uh, Beetle camera clip. And so of course the first thing that appealed to me was that it was cheaper, but even more so it just looked like easier to use and like easier to attach and detach from your backpack strap. So I decided to, when I saw a discount on this for Amazon Prime Day from its usual price of $60 down to $50, I decided to buy this. So my, my gear purchases are so boring nowadays because I'm more just focused on like practicality and convenience and ease of use. So I have my two cameras set up the way I am I'm planning to shoot with them is I'll have my Canon EOS R with my 85 millimeter f1.8 and I have the 5D Mark III with a Tamron 24 to 70 f2.8. So let's see if I can uh, put this on my backpack right now and test out this dual camera setup. Okay. Yeah, so this is the small rig uh, multi-function camera backpack. Unfortunately discontinued. Let's see how easy this is to put on. Uh-oh, I think my strap might be too wide for this. Ah, oh, damn it. If I can force it closed anyway. No, I, or can I make it thicker? Oh, there you go, I think I, so there's like these, if you can see, let me pull up the camera view so I can. So like, there's these little like teeth inside that hole so you can make this wider if you need to so this is on the when it's thinner let me pull that in but then you can like move it over and make it wider so now it's a little thicker let's see if that's 
hopefully thick enough to put on this backpack. Okay, that hmm, seems to fit on it. So that's how, I don't know if you can see how that looks up to the camera. That's how it looks right now. It's kind of right on the edge of being almost too thick. Hmm, not sure how, see how stable that is. Like, it's not moving up and down at all. So it looks pretty stable. Okay. So slide out the, the plate. So the way I plan to use my two camera setup is my my Canon EOS R with 85mm f1.8 will be my main camera and then uh, the 5D Mark III with either the 24-70 or 35mm or 40mm will be my second camera that I'll keep on this strap. My main camera, the EOS R, will be on a shoulder strap. So let's take my 5D Mark III and screw this in. Well, it has like a little black cap on this to protect the, the screw. How do I get this off? Is it coming off? Am I doing this wrong? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Ugh. Come on. Come on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Finally. Got the little black tip off. So let's see. The way it slides in. Has to be that angle, okay. So I need to put this in here. So into, into the, the hole on the 5D. I'm screwing it by hand. So it has like a, a groove in there if you want to use a screwdriver. I'm just screwing it in by hand for now. Pretty tight already. Yeah, it's it's not moving. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see how this feels to get this on there. Yeah, and that probably feels too heavy. Let's stand up actually and try this. Okay. Oh, that feels quite bulky. Yes. I'm Probably gonna put a 35 millimeter on this instead. That works though. The other moment of truth is let me try my Canon EOS R with the shoulder strap. I wonder if it's gonna get in the way of each other, probably. Oh God. Am I gonna regret this? Okay, the straps don't really interfere with, the strap doesn't, the shoulder strap, it's an Optech USA shoulder strap. Luckily, it doesn't interfere with the capture clip. Yeah, so this would be my main portrait camera. Portrait camera setup with 85 millimeter. But then suddenly, oh, something changes, or I want to take like a candid shot, or behind the scenes shot, or just a group picture or something. Then we get released this. I'm going to get my 2470 for my wide angle. Put it back on. I am so worried that <laughs> more more about user error than the clip is that I worry that like I'll be I'll rush and do it too fast and put my camera thinking I slid it in but actually I didn't and then I just let go and the camera drops. So I gotta make sure like check it and like only let go at the last minute when I know it's locked in there. So then there's a switch to lock it in so that. Yeah, you can't accidentally push this button. So then if you put it back this way, now it's back in release mode. So one thing I was worried about is about is whether the camera clip, whether the plate can just slide straight down. But actually no, there's a little there's a little hump right there that's was that's oh I can't really see it. Where my finger is right there. Is that can you see it? Okay there. That little like tab, like black tab is sticking out to block it from just like sliding down. Oh, you can push it in though. Huh. 
Oh, underneath, underneath the pushed in tab, there's this other black tab. Oh, this is so hard to see. Like underneath right there, that sticks out and does not get pushed down. And hopefully that'll catch it from, keep it from sliding down and sliding through and falling to the floor. So this is my first time using it, like literally from unboxing. And yeah, luckily it's, so far it's been as fast and easy to set up as the videos say it is. My only big worry was right in the beginning though when I thought maybe my, my, cam my backpack strap was too wide. But I was able to fit it okay. The teeth, you can't really see it though, but these teeth to adjust, oh, I can't, let me, oh, where's the, is there an angle? These teeth right there, you, can, you can't really see it, but inside there, those teeth, like to adjust the thickness, they're kind of biting into the edge of the, my backpack strap a little. I'm not sure how worried I should be about that. Can I move this over? I might, I might try to readjust this again and move move the the clip a little bit more to the left let's try that can i release this how did i get this off okay slide this over a little bit more oh no that is the most you can slide it over okay never mind now I want to get this back in there. Yeah, I think that's the best I can do. All right. I think with practice I can get faster, but even then I still want to be, be careful and not rush it when I need to put my camera back. Oh my God. This looks totally dorky, but this just, it's not about making me look good, it's about making the model or the people I'm photographing look good. If this can help me to switch between lenses faster without having to take a lens on and off, it'll be worth it. Yeah. All right. And my other worry was whether this strap would, I don't know, like block or touch the camera clip, but so far that's not happening. All right. Okay, so I'm Marcus Sortias. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you. See you in the next video.